Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, really today, uh, welcome to the presentation. Uh, I'm George Wright. I'm the VP of M2 Technologies. We're a manufacturing consulting firm, but we also have the, the, the pleasure and the benefit of providing the Autodesk solutions to the manufacturing industry. As you can tell by the sirens in the background, I'm here in the middle of New York City, so uh, I'm not being chased in any way. But uh, today we're here with Tyler uh, from Autodesk, who is going to help us continue our series uh, of webinars helping you uh, in the manufacturing industries get, get the most out of the Autodesk software, Autodesk solutions, um, which, you're in, which you're investing in, which you're implementing into your firm to help uh, you know, further automate the technologies and increase workflows. Really, without further de delay, I would really like to introduce Tyler, turn over the webinar to him, and let him take it from here. Tyler, thank you so much for helping us, and please take it away. Great, thanks. Appreciate that. So, I'll kick back. So, welcome everybody today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, Autodesk Inventor, and we're going to be talking about how you can maximize design workflows and but also maybe talk a little bit more about just what all are the different workflows that Inventor is gonna make possible. So there's um, there's many solutions that we've built, um, kind of Inventor as a platform within Autodesk, and that platform is designed uh, to solve many challenges just well beyond uh, design. So um, we'll, we'll jump into that and uh, we'll talk about um, some of the capabilities and so let's first do maybe just a quick uh, we'll talk do an overview after I introduce myself and a little bit about my background and we'll jump right into the demonstration and uh, we'll leave some time at the end for uh, Q&A for time to to raise any major questions you have or little questions you have about the product or about capabilities or your own needs so thanks for joining so just a little bit about me, a uh, funny picture, but uh, background, I'm a mechanical engineer, um, and I am, I'm based in Denver currently, and I worked for many years for a big uh, engineering firm where we used all kinds of products. We used everything from AutoCAD to Inventor to SolidWorks, Ansys, uh, Innovia, and, um, we use smart plant we use all these different technologies and uh, part of the challenge is we're getting things to work in, a, in an actual uh, streamlined workflow or at least uh, eliminating some of the pain with all those different handoffs between different teams um, i also worked for many years for the salt for in the SOLWORKS channel um, where um, i focused heavily on the simulation fea component the design side as well as uh, the data management side so um, i've also spent uh, years working at different uh, colleges um, as an adjunct professor as well as um, you know I have a, a YouTube channel that I keep going um, at a, a somewhat regular basis so um, love I love teaching and sharing some of this uh, this information and um, helping people with their with their journey in through design and through their through their work okay so uh, just one quick thing about Autodesk that some people um, aren't aware of. Um, most people are. They call us the AutoCAD company in some cases. But um, the big thing is, is we've been around for for you know 30 years and um, have seen some tremendous growth over the years. But one thing that I love to see is that 27% reinvested back into product, back into r and I love seeing that, that it continues to get pushed, uh, which is growing our product. So when we look at that, um, the thing that we're trying to understand and help our customers with is just what is the future of making look like and what technologies are going to be critical in that path. So, um, you know, we care about the whole landscape of, of design and engineering, not just the design, not just simulate or not just uh, manufacturing or machining, but the whole landscape from even just communicating. So, um, I'm going to be talking about Inventor today, and uh, right at the top, so Inventor, Nastran, and HSM, these are three tools right there that are all part of a platform. They all work right with an Inventor, um, whether that's the ability to do virtual testing or the ability to create tool paths and send that to a CNC, um, the ability to leverage Fusion for a generative workflow or to bring in AutoCAD or if you're using electrical, electrical has this, uh, actually has 
uh, a, a full integration with Inventor where you can do uh, cable and harness design. And then there's all these additional products that kind of help in the workflow separate of Inventor. And we've put all of this together in one package um, to make it easy to go end to end. That's, that is the goal, to make it a better experience where you have tools at your disposal to go beyond just uh, designing. So, but for today, um, we're gonna be focused on that design and engineering side. And we're gonna use some of these upcoming webinars to talk more about the platform, about advanced simulation, about CAM and the ability to tool pass, factory design, how does electrical play, what, how do these things go together with Inventor? But for today, let's, let's target Inventor. And some of the things, um, bear with me guys, I know that we have just a couple more slides and then we'll get, <laughs> get talking about um, the actual software. But one thing that I think is critical for everyone to be able to do in a design tool is parametric. And that's just a fancy word for the ability to make a design change and see that update in the assembly and see that update in the drawing. But even beyond that, to go into that my design intent is that this hole always stays centered and when I make changes around it, it still stays centered no matter how big I make the part, how small. So it's going to keep your intelligence throughout the model. That's really the goal of parametric. There's another thing that's really important for a lot of people, like the ability to take someone else's file and make changes to it without having to have that whole history tree. What if the parametric is not really there? can you still make the design changes you need quickly and easily? And uh, Inventor does have that capability and we call it direct modeling or direct editing. Uh, other things I'm gonna talk about is the ability to share information over the web easily, quickly, without any of those bottlenecks around technology, around downloads, around firewalls, around those types of things. And then let's talk a little bit about the engineering side of Inventor. Um, one thing I love, I, you know, I use SOLIDWORKS for many years and I, I love that tool. But one thing that just blows me away about Inventor is it has a lot of engineering tools that it goes beyond design and gets into calculations built in to make your life as a designer engineer easier. So we'll jump into some of that. Um, just to you know, gloss over some of the you know the big improvements. We've added some serious improvement around large assemblies. The ability to open large assemblies, edit them quickly, view them, make drawings, create those parts lists. Um, I've seen a huge uptick. You know, um, in some cases, five times faster, three times faster. So I'm seeing a big um, improvement for our our customers that have. 2,500 components, 10,000 components, 50,000 components. So those types of large, large designs are seeing big improvements. We added the ability to nest so that you can optimize for sheet metal or wood or whatever that you need to optimize for a laser cutter, water jet, what type of operation where, or even to a CNC of how can I lay out my design the fastest and best way to save money. So that's now built into Inventor with the collection. Um, one thing I'll show a little bit later is AnyCAD, giving you different concepts or a capabilities around, do you wanna bring in someone else's file and not convert it, not change it to Inventor, but rather keep it a SOLIDWORKS file to where if they were to send you an updated version, it just updates seamlessly right in your assembly. Maybe someone's doing the motor design for you in a different CAD product. Maybe someone's doing the shell or the housing and it's, it's outside of your company, but you wanna be able to bring in that, that other CAD data. You can do that and work with that in a clean, easy way. Uh, of course, we have the ability to do um, full, powerful FEA with Nastran, and that's built right into Inventor. And that's, you know, in some future webinars with the ability to, to simulate and get feedback on designs. And then you can optimize your designs as well as take into account, you know, advanced materials like nonlinear materials, rubbers, plastics, carbon fiber. Um, or as well as crazy loading types, whether they be dynamic or nonlinear or um, time-based. So any of those types of operations covered within that workflow. We have a full data management tool, Vault, that plugs right within 
to Inventor, works right in Inventor, it's seamless, and that's a, that makes finding data, reusing data, not having to redo things, because you're able to find those past projects, past files, uh, based off of any kind of information that you put in that file, whether it's the keyword, who created it, when it was done, the file size, uh, the cost center, any kind of information that you want to attach to a file, um, Vault will make that all easier to use and to manage. And then, of course, tool paths within Inventor, the ability to create full um, full end-to-end -end machining capabilities, whether it's a lathe, a mill, mill turn, all the way up to five axis. This is an incredible tool. I love HSM. I wasn't very um, capable, you know, very proficient with this uh, technology until I was introduced to HSM and I was blown away with how fast I could program a part and actually go and build, you know, uh, cut chips right on a, on a Haas mill. So it's incredible. And finally, um, AutoCAD does go right in. We can, you know, import, bring in those DWGs and recognize them. We can also export as DWG from Inventor, but we also have full workflows with electrical and mechanical and others. So, all right. So electricals and of course, incredible. If you guys have moving parts and you need to account for that, that's something maybe worth considering with that workflow. Finally, the, the last thing I want to mention before I get into Inventor is we have this new technology that I've been completely blown away by, and it's called generative technology, and it's um, generative design. And it's a totally different way of looking at things, where you could take something as simple as this press, this clamping system. It's just a bunch of simple milled out parts um, that if we needed to optimize for weight or stiffness and consider a bunch of materials and consider um, different ways of even uh, producing this, whether it be 3D, like additive, like 3D printing, or metal centering with a 3D printer, or even just what would be the best thing we could mill out out of a simple CNC, what, how could we save weight, or how could we optimize this? And what I love is you simply tell it where you need to keep and hold material, you lay out a few materials, and then it kicks out these incredible wild concept. So it's almost design exploration, right? And this one was, you know, a 95% weight reduction and down to, you know, under 100 grams. Um, but it also was um, done in, you know, under an hour. And I didn't draw this. Um, Generative just kicked it out to me. This one is uh, maybe a little bit easier to fabricate, but this one even further. Like this one could be done on a three axis mill. It'd be a lot of setups. So I wouldn't want to really do it myself. But um, the point is you can optimize for the simplest of machining, even if you want to take it further. And then you can continue to reduce all the parts. And then how far can you take that? And what are the advantages to that where it makes sense for you financially? The point is you now have another team member that's creating these new designs for you and that's the technology that's generative. So pretty excited about that. And you know, watching it in action, always fun to see like the iterative process that even the technology goes through of refining this down to try to converge on the load types and the materials that I specified and it's giving me this place of this is where we can meet that convergence of the ultimate weight loss with enough stiffness and strength and uh, the material specified. Okay, so maybe let's jump into Inventor now. Thank you for your patience. And first to kick it off, um, I'm in Autodesk Inventor. I'm in 2019 and I have um, a pedal box assembly open. And, you know, kind of first thing out of the gate, the things that I like to ro remind people about with Inventor is right up at the top right is my name. And that is a named user. I log in with my simple free uh, email and password. And that logs me in. And that's not really that big a deal. This is a local install on my, my laptop. But where that gets exciting or where that's cool a pain point for me was when I was in industry, you know, I'd have guys that needed to travel and they needed to use their design tools elsewhere. And they didn't always have a laptop. They might have a really powerful workstation right under their desk and they didn't use a laptop. And then I had users that had laptops and then I had people that had a home office and I had 
all these different users and I have the same challenge for myself is I need to be able to work on several different stations. Maybe I need to go out to a workshop machine. You can install Inventor as many times as you like and you can have it ready to go on all these different machines. But you can come in and log in with your username and it activates and then boom, you're, you're now activated on that machine and using your license there. So that was a, a nice transition for me coming from the old days where it's a serial number and it's tied to one IP address and that's it, right? You really can't use a home machine that easily without a bunch of paperwork or um, you know, use it correctly. So I love that we can kind of access it from anywhere. And maybe talking about access is one thing that um, is new uh, in the last few years is the ability to share information with someone, maybe in your office, maybe outside of the office, maybe it's a strategic vendor, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a new vendor, maybe it's um, a client of yours that at, you're working on a design concept for them, and you need to share that information with them quickly. I have a terrible story about a few years ago, I was working with my brother, he sent me a, um, a napkin sketch of a design, I drew it up real fast, thinking I'm an expert with CAD, I can do, you know, I can make this, and I did, and I sent him the file, and we spent days trying to get him to download the right viewer and get it working on his old laptop, and finally it, it worked, and it was with several, you know, lots of emails and lots of frustration. I felt like, I thought I was an expert. I thought, you know, this shouldn't be that hard. And so when we created this thing called Shared Views, I was blown away. Um, what it is, is the ability to create a 3D viewable of this data. And you can see I have some other ones uh, already created and I can include different types of information. But what, what's cool about this is if we go out to that to that cloud uh, link, is it's all based on the web. So it's just a URL, meaning if you give someone the, the link address or the URL, they can go out to this site and they can view it. So let's jump out there and let's look at some of this. This also can be a free viewer for um, your uh, peers, your, your vendors, whoever it is, um, you can, uh, they can bring in step files and other types of files for free and view files as they wish. But when someone sends me this URL, this is what they're going to get. On a smartphone, on a tablet, whatever it is, you send them the link, they get the file, they can now move it around, they can understand what you had intended to share. If it's an assembly, it has the ability to explode. If you'd like to share um, kind of what makes up this assembly, you can turn off the names for all the parts and the sub-assemblies, but the, the user can come in and understand and hide certain components in order to um, you know, highlight and isolate what they care about. Um, the other thing with the ability to make comments. So, um, I could come in and, uh, you know, maybe grab a certain scrap, it grabs a snapshot and then I can come in and mark this up and, you know, call something out, add a, some text, add my question, my concern, whatever it is and save that, that will continue forward as a collaboration between me and my other peers that I'm sharing this with. What's exciting is it's also a snapshot. It, it goes right back to what they were looking at, what they were concerned about. It's, um, it, it shows that snapshot in time so that you know what they were viewing when they asked. They weren't looking at the underside. They weren't looking at the front. They were looking at a certain angle. So pretty incredible. Um, I've had lots of process, lots of customers just mention how easy this is for them to use, how important this will be for very small specific parts of their business. And they're using it in ways that surprise me, whether it's just I'm using this internal with one of my team members who doesn't have any design tools, as well as um, I was talking to a consultant and his whole goal was to have be able to share data out on the cloud. That was his whole goal, and this fit the bill perfectly for him. So, um, you know, a lot of different use cases for it, but hopefully um, this could be useful for you. This is in available in Inventor, as well as if you're familiar with our Vault product, um, you can do this straight from Vault. So the ability to share data 
outside the, the firewall is pretty incredible and pretty exciting. So I'm just going to open that one that I created a few minutes ago just to check it out and make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Okay, good. So that looks good. Now, one question that comes up is how do I share this data with someone without them stealing it from me, right? So um, <laughs> maybe I'm being dramatic, but this data is now, um, this, is, uh, this can't be CNC'd. This can't be 3D printed. Um, this is not data. This is just viewable information. It's tessellated triangles. Um, it can be measured, which you can turn that on or off. Now, if you want someone to download the files, there's another workflow for that. And it's uh, kind of just a different step. But let's jump back into Inventor and get, get going. Okay, so um, first, let's talk really quick about parametric. Um, this is a parametric design. This is an assembly. How do I make a drawing of this? Um, incredibly easy to do that. I know this is pretty pretty easy for some of you guys that are familiar with the product. I won't, we won't be here very long, but the ability to bring in that 3D model, create your drawing on the fly. One of my favorite things about Inventor is, it's very subtle, is when you bring in a step file, you bring in someone else's information, it may come in upside down, right? Their origin's in the wrong spot, it's up in some weird corner, and the front view is not the front view. But you can cheat the system easily when you drop in this view just by spinning it around with the view cube, and then you can create projections right off of that and um, design what do you want to see in the view? Do you want it shaded or not? Do you want this just to be hidden line? And what scale do you want this in? One other really cool option here is I could also reference some other file. Like if I wanted to show this buyout part as well on a drawing, I could add that in in a minute. I could add that step file and it'll create that drawing, create those views, and we can annotate this correctly. Um, one thing that we do in uh, Inventor is the ability to bring in all of the model dimensions. That's all the dimensions that you already did at the part and assembly level. At an assembly at this size, it'd probably be overwhelming with all the dimensions, so I probably wouldn't want to do that. I'd probably want to do my own dimensioning. But to quickly create that parts list is probably pretty important for me. And so I can, can do that based off of a view and drag that in and we can put this you know wherever we need this to to sit um, whether it's in the top right or um, off to the side so um, we've got the ability to do that parts list and annotate that with um, with balloons and to to call this out and and get this where we can fabricate it all right, I know this isn't the most fun part of design is doing drawings, but it's typically the most critical. It still seems to be our currency for us as designers and engineers is at the end, at the end we're always creating drawings. Some companies have, are, are just going right to machining and fabrication and that's awesome, but even in that case, most companies are still creating their 2D drawings and that's critical. So if I want to um, you know, make a change to this part file um, and I want to see that update on the drawing, I can do that. And um, of course, uh, we have some new capabilities with even our simple simple hole wizard. So um, with our hole wizard, we have the ability to leverage um, effectively a machinist handbook, so to speak, right? So I've got um, all these different um, uh, tapped holes that I can do, and then I can go in and leverage the different uh, standard sizes. And I can drop these in. And what's exciting about this is this no longer requires any kind of pre-sketching, but I can uh, even plug in the dimensions as I go, and um, I can you know, kind of create distances right now. So what's exciting is I'm doing this without having to do a sketch first, and that's kind of pretty different from most workflows, even in other CAD tools. So the ability to add these holes, to save this information, and to see that in the drawing and have that update automatically. So we can save that. I don't need to follow up that. But um, yeah, we can see that uh, in the drawing. But let's, let's jump back. So um, one thing I wanted to make mention before um, I want to talk about how do we 
um, create parts fast and intelligent with some automation. So let's jump into that. But before we do, how do we create a decent presentation view of this? How do we create something like, I'm running into a design review tomorrow um, and I want it to look decent. I've got some concepts I wanna show off. Um, or the marketing team just needs something decent for the website for right now. Or uh, we got a trade show tomorrow and I need something that's okay. The ability to jump into these visual styles, whether it's monochrome, a technical illustration, a uh, even a sketch or a watercolor. You have some of these built-in presets immediately within Inventor. And as well as you can go all the way to um, you know, a pretty nice looking, maybe I would say an engineering grade rendering where it looks pretty sharp, but maybe for um, those marketing nerds out there, 3D Studio Max is even better, right? Uh, and more powerful, but you can do either one. Right, and, and 3D Studio Max is included with Inventor with that collection, but just to be able to do this quickly, um, as well as turn on ray tracing and have it create nice high-powered um, renderings uh, at the end, we can do that. I can kick on this ray tracing, and this will take a while, uh, depending on how many processors I have and how high of, of a rendering you want to create. Do I want a draft, a low, a high? So all that's kind of just built right in to Inventor. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about next is how do I create um, a design quickly um, right within Inventor with some automation built in. So this is one thing that is, is pretty different that's included right within Inventor. It's called iLogic. And iLogic is kind of, um, it spans a lot of different use cases and a lot of different capabilities. Anything from as simple as um, you know, being able to build simple parts faster with uh, maybe even like a spreadsheet type experience or the ability to fully build out an assembly and its drawing all with some just clicks of the button, right? That maybe gets you 80% of the way. So first thing in Inventor, sketching is going to be just like all those other tools out there. The ability to sketch on planes in 3D or in 2D, the ability to drag on these dimensions and these dimensions be parametric, meaning they drive how this behaves and we can add constraints, of course, as needed. And there I have a couple different dimensions, but I can build an intelligence right in the tool itself. If I were to say this is the height, it equals one. And I were to say this, um, whoops, it's one except double click and this is the width let's do great let's extrude it the extruded depth could even be a parameter where i say this is the thickness and it equals one right so there we've got a simple plate how could you um, make this easier for someone coming after you to build this or maybe even hand it off to a non-designer non-engineer that wants to be able to kind of configure this um, or maybe they a sales engineer someone that just needs something that they they don't have to understand how you built it as much as um, how can they make changes so with iLogic we have something incredible as simple as create a form so I'll add this form, and what this is, is it's building a, a, a tool that can be leveraged right out of the gate. I drag in the three parameters that we typed in earlier, and now when someone wants to run this, they just click it, and there's our form. They can drive how this behaves. They can just plug in numbers and have the model update. And we can get as crazy as we want with this, right? I know this is an incredibly simple example, but this is all built right in. And I know for SolidWorks, um, I worked a lot with um, uh, some additional components that we had uh, third parties that I would bring in to, to build this kind of automation in. And I love the ability to do that automation. So I love that with Inventor, we've added this in to just, it's just a part of Inventor. So if we wanna you know, jump ahead to maybe a finished version, um, let's look at one that we've done, I've done in the past. And it's a larger assembly and I wanna be able to run not only just that form, but I've put in if then statements, right? I've added some simple um, VB code right into the iLogic configurator 
And when I hit configure, it's got a, a much better form, right? You've got the ability to um, design based off the belt width. I have my, uh, my, my icon, I have my logo, as well as the ability to come in and select these. You can see that these are pull downs. They're not free form text. Um, I've got a free form up here, but you've got all that control of, do you want to just put in pull downs? Do you want radio buttons? What do you want to help your users configure the model? Hit OK, hit apply, watch that assembly update, create the drawing. You can even create the drawing with iLogic and have that configured as well. So hopefully you see some value in this, whether it's as simple as just, these are some standard things that I do a lot of, I'd like to automate that, or it's we have a sales arrangement drawing. That's something that we did at my last company that we did a lot of those and it just needed to be close enough for the sales drawing. It didn't need to be perfect, but it needed to show our prospects what we intended to build and what we intended to make for them and what we were quoting. And this is incredible as well as this feeds out to our, our web site, uh, Configurator 360. Maybe I can show that on a, a different uh, different day, a different webinar. So the next thing I want to talk about was that direct editing that I, I mentioned. So what happens when um, you know there's our our tool? Sorry, our assembly's automating, updating, and see all these changes happening on the fly once I've made all these big changes to the configuration. Um, what happens when you're bringing in someone else's data? Right? What happens when you're working with SOLIDWORKS or ProE or uh, Fusion or any other file formats out there that you want to bring them in? So in Inventor, we give you a couple different options. I want to show those now. So let's look at, um, I've got, uh, let's, let's open first just a SOLIDWORKS file. So I've got some SOLIDWORKS files and they haven't been converted. They're, um, I've got an assembly, I'm gonna open that. And what I love is uh, Inventor's gonna ask you two questions. Are you, or were you hoping to keep this as a reference file or convert it? Convert it means change it into an Inventor assembly and Inventor parts. And as you might know already, that when you do that, uh, whenever you bring in another CAD file, no matter what tool you're in today, if you're in SOLIDWORKS, you're in Inventor, Fusion, whenever you bring in someone else's file, you lose that history tree. You lose all the steps, the sketches, the fillets, the extrudes, the cuts, the holes that you can edit. That kind of goes away, and that's normal uh, within our industry. I wish it wasn't the case. Inventor can do feature recognition. It's included in the tool. But my experience with that across the industries, across all the products is none of them do that perfectly as well as none of them capture the design intent of the user. It doesn't seem to ever really translate. I would love to see that technology in the future that just seamlessly does that for, for everyone. But for the moment, um, it's important that we could bring in this ball valve and we could have someone else's file. We could drop this into our larger inventor assembly and when they update the network drive with this or they email me the latest SOLIDWORKS file, it's just going to update right in my main assembly. And I love that. That's called AnyCAD. The other thing that we can do that's in really incredible is this idea of direct editing. So you've got this um, step file, SOLIDWORKS file, you bring it in, it turns into an inventor part, but it doesn't have any history. That's what we're used to. Now, how could I make all the design changes that I need to make without having to rebuild this from scratch? So I'll kick on my direct editor and I'll just go to work, right? Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I don't need the emboss of the, the previous um, name or builder or whatever it is. I don't want that. Instead, what I wanna do is um, I'll select all those faces and then um, you know start working on how we can delete those faces and then maybe like move some of these holes and stretch some faces. How do you do that without having to start over, right? So let's do that. Looks like I got a little stuck there. So I'll select these faces. It selects all of them and I hit the delete key and hit accept. It tries to remove those faces, backfill it with geometry and 
saving me some time there. That's great. Next thing is someone says, yeah, that, that hole is in the wrong spot as well as this is a little short and that there's some fillets you need to get rid of, right? So um, I'll just select this face at the end and drag it with the triad. I can drag with uh, numbers numerically um, and hit accept, um, or I can um, just drag it kind of free form and get a feel for it. I can move where this hole sits. I can uh, delete it and put in a new hole. The good news is when you add a new feature, so if you said, Tyler, that nasty fillet there in the corner, that is just weird. I don't know where that came from. That got created in my other CAD system that didn't mean to, or it's an old file, and I don't know why that's still there. Can we delete that? Yes, let's delete it. And then you say, well, but can you drop in a fillet, um, or can you drop a fillet on this edge? What happens if you do? So when I you know, drag in a fillet, or a new feature, a cut, a sketch, anything, when I do that, it's gonna add that to the tree. So I'm, I'm dragging this in right there, hitting okay, it's, um, probably way too big right let's try there we go there we go so we've got to fill it and you can see that added right to the tree that's fully editable I can edit that delete it suppress it anything I need to do and it, this goes beyond that uh, capability of just moving some basic faces the ability to to maybe stretch and re-angle how things behave, like I love this emboss that is a series of emboss that like around there with some fillets and there's just a lot going on there. So if I select that and try to rotate it, it's gonna rotate it, but it's gonna stretch the other face and resolve the fillet. I love that, I love that it can do that. And so this isn't a catch-all for everything, I know that, but hopefully the ability to direct edit can give you um, some space to continue to work on designs and make changes with other people's files uh, and work with other CAD formats. So um, that's some of those capabilities. So we've talked about iLogic, talked about direct editing, talked about that shared view capability out into the web. Um, let's talk about maybe one more thing um, and then I'll um, stop and, uh, you know, give some time for questions. Um, the other thing is the, the kind of that more engineering side of Inventor is the ability to create weldments, structural members, um, as well as the ability to take a, um, an existing assembly and create geometry, but also the ability to get quick calculations and feedback, kind of like basically a machinist handbook just built right into Inventor. That's kind of what I was hoping. I always had one on my desk ready to go but um, now maybe I can start to leverage some of this built-in tech. So uh, we have everything from bolted connections to a frame uh, generator, of course, mentioned that, but the shaft tool and bearings and welds, the ability to analyze these and get feedback. But I wanna create a bolted connection. And what I want it to do is just start by creating some simple geometry um, based you know, in this corner and it, this is the top, this is the bottom, and it's you know dropping in some holes, and I can size it with this simple pull down, um, but I also can add some fasteners you know from our content center. So from our pre-built library, this is all you know out of the box functionality, and I want to add maybe a, you know a, a bolt, and I want to add a washer, and I want to add um, a nut, you know. So I want to do those designs kind of on the fly. And then I want to um, then kind of do a quick calculation. I don't want to do simulation just yet. I just want some feedback, right? So I'll jump to our calculation tool. And you notice there's even a fatigue calc. So you can do cycles based on materials. Pretty cool. You can set up the plates, um, what their material is, and even the bolt itself and its material. What basic loadings do you expect? What um, type of, you know, what's our preload? What's our tightness? What's, um, what's the factor of safety, right? So we've got all these things. And if, if I run it, it's saying the safety requirement isn't met. And that's because I have, I'm saying it needs to be three times stronger than the load case. And when I look at that, um, 
the size of the fastener I picked, it's looking pretty small. So maybe I should have picked something a little bit bigger, right? And when I, you know, run this down, it looks like I've got a factor of safety of 1.2. So this is barely stronger than our, you know, max uh, axial force and loading condition that I set up. But hopefully you're seeing that you can also uh, take, take into account like how many bolts do you want to do? If you want to do an eight bolt design versus 12, what or even um, the just taking into account different diameters of the bolt. Lots of different ways to get quick feedback right within this design accelerator accelerator. Uh, and when we hit OK and create that, we're going to get um, whole features that get created and geometry that gets created and new fasteners included into the assembly all added in, um, you know, with just one wizard or tool. OK. So um, I kind of wanted to talk briefly about uh, uh, weldments or the uh, frame generator within Inventor. So um, make just a few minutes for that, and then I'll, I'll pause and we can maybe take some questions. So um, yeah, lots I wanted to show you guys today. Um, one of those is the ability to nest. Um, so you can take, uh, maybe we can save this for just another day when we're talking about our machining. Just want to throw it out there. If you need to optimize based on a sheet metal design or just on... Um, you know, maybe it's a, it's a wood shop, it's cabinets, whatever it is that you need to optimize um, for job counts. This is all an output right from Inventor with our new nesting technology. I love it. I love getting that, that kind of feedback. But I wanted to talk about a frame generator for a second. So I have a, a simple sketch in 3D, and I need to drop in a bunch of uh, 3D structural members. And so I'll insert frame. And what I want to do is just um, choose from a standard library or custom shapes, depending on what you're working with. Um, you can grab from our standard library. How is it oriented on the sketch lines? Do you want to offset it? What size are you using? Is it small? Is it large? And what uh, type of material do you want to apply at this? And how do you want to drop these in? So I love that just by simply collect, you know, clicking lines and clicking um, this existing shape, I can, uh, you know, throw together a frame really quickly. Now, I could also just box select this, and but I'll create these real quick, just the bottom, and then I could just highlight and hover over these, and it would just drop in all those structural members. But maybe I want to do different structural members for the vertical members. Maybe this is tubing. Do you want to do tubing and pipe? All those different types of options built right within Inventor. So let's miter this, um, maybe this corner. So just by selecting corners, we can choose to butt these. We can choose to miter them with a gap. We can choose to just gap them. Uh, you can have a, a three-point connection from three different members coming into a corner. All types of different styles can be accounted for. And of course, we can create a drawing of this with a full parts list and quantities and cut lengths. So pretty incredible that this is also um, included as a part of that design and full kind of end-to-end workflows. So uh, Kristen, I think I'll, I'll go ahead and pause for for questions, um, see if anybody has any outstanding questions for me. Got it. So I'm hearing uh, the question is like, take into um, take an example of a bottle cap, you know, a plastic with threads and tolerances. Um, and can I simulate that? Could I simulate it to see how tightly it's going to fit and um, how it's going to connect? So um, our simulation tool does take into account um, snap fits and plastic materials. You can do those nonlinear materials and you can um, so like take into the, the plastic buckle example uh, where you have things snapping into place. Uh, we can absolutely do that. We can actually do that well in uh, Inventor. Uh, you can do that um, with our dynamic uh, simulation as well and with fusion those two can can do that problem pretty well and that can help you understand kind of expected behaviors of course the goal is for you to get feedback so that you whittle out those bad ideas you still want to prototype that and still get the feel um, I think for those screws from my example my experience I've had 
similar design challenges in the past where um, I was able to simulate it to a point and then I just needed, since it was plastic and it was hard to uh, fully understand behaviors, I, you know, I had to, had to build my prototypes and design accordingly. So, so yes, I guess um, <laughs> the soft answer is you absolutely can simulate that and get feedback, but um, you know, it's, it's still, you're still going to want to do your prototypes. Are there any other questions? I'm just seeing one question. Great, Kristen, is there anything, uh, any housekeeping uh, for you at the end? Um, I have a few more minutes. I'm happy to maybe show just a couple more things before we wrap up, but um, anything from you before um, I jump back into that? No, I appreciate everyone's time today. If you have anything else, please jump on www.m2t.com. Follow us up on our Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Um, and, and Tyler, dive in if you'd like. Um, if anybody else has any questions, please feel free to add them to the panel. Great. Yeah, so um, with, uh, with Inventor, um, please stay tuned. We're going to do a few more of these webinars where we're going to dive into kind of the, the HSM and the CAM component of, of working with ToolPaths with Inventor. We're going to spend, hopefully, get to do a session on NASTRAN and the capabilities of simulation and kind of how you get started with that. Um, but one thing, I guess, to keep in mind, one thing I love about working with Inventor is anytime I've Googled something like, um, you know, where is uh, this tool? What is this trim to frame? And I love that we have um, these tool tips that pop up as well as we have the ability to go right into the help. And in the help, it's, you know, we have um, tutorials already built right in, and we have a, you know, a pretty healthy YouTube community out there for, um, for tutorials, as well as um, our, our partners that, um, like M2, that have training and mentoring available to help you with your actual um, best practices. But I love getting started with the ability to jump right into these tutorials and the help, like just clicking F1 or you know using those tool tips to understand, well, you know, what is this option? And this is huge when I was learning uh, everything from machining to even learning how to use uh, the tools like Frame Generator or learning iLogic within Inventor. So um, when I uh, go back to my home screen, um, Inventor does have some, some capabilities around um, managing all of your files. You know, the ability to do this project file, this was kind of new to me, and it was the ability to kind of coordinate cer certain uh, folders uh, per project. So maybe if I was a consultant and I was doing a different project per customer, and kind of segregating data and keeping all the data separate from each other. This is a great way to work. Now, if you're working in uh, a vaulted instance where all your data is in one spot, that's even easier, I think, and that's probably just one design project. But if you're in a small shop and you've got to collaborate um, across a bunch of different files and manage those, that's where Vault is incredible, but that, uh, that project capability can make, uh, make your life a little bit easier. So, um, you know, maybe just finishing on the drawing, remember that we can bring in those DWGs from AutoCAD, as well as we've got this dynamic, um, you know, drawing capability. So the ability to jump in and out of the part and model or assembly model and jump right back to the drawing, make those changes and have them update using uh, even that direct editing, right? So I could use my direct editing to move holes and add fillets and cuts and have that update in my drawing. Um, so, you know, of course, uh, you have the ability to do templates with Inventor where you can pre-save uh, kind of your standard notes as well as your standard um, uh, settings and configurations for all your different file types. Um, so you can set up those drawings as well. So um, maybe my last um, offering, uh, keep in mind we have Autodesk University every year and that's a terrific event to attend for training and growth for yourself and your team and to see what's possible. But for right now, there is an extensive library of some amazing recorded content. And that content is um, all available on demand um, at Autodesk University, um, if I jump out to that. Um, you, can, you can take these courses, most of them um, have handouts and 
uh, even tutorials and data sets, but they also have a re the recorded session. And usually these sessions are done by experts, guys that know Inventor very well, or they know um, Electrical incredibly well, or they're a leader in their industry, and they're there to share with you on um, these types of content. So um, when looking at that, it's, um, it's the on-demand. There we go. Free online classes, tutorials, right on the right on the help through Google, and I can browse through these uh, different courses. And you know, uh, this is also a terrific area for training and best practices, and maybe just continued growth. So I hope that that's I hope that's also helpful for you. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. I um, hope you have a terrific day, and I'll look forward to to hopefully you joining the the upcoming sessions.